Brothers Mose and Garrison Siskin's story is a story about family, compassion, promises kept, and dreams fulfilled. It began with a journey to seek a better life. Their father, Robert Hyman Siskin, a Lithuanian immigrant, fled his homeland to escape religious persecution. He traveled the countryside in the beginning as a peddler with uh, goods on his back, buying and selling um, goods, anything from paper to rags to pieces of scrap. Uh, Eventually, he came to Chattanooga one day uh, to try to do some business with his peddling, and he noticed all the smokestacks. Because, you know, at, at that time, Chattanooga, after the Civil War, was a big industrial center, and there were a lot of smokestacks around. He figured where smokestacks, there's business. So he decided to settle in uh, Chattanooga. After a while, uh, he had saved a few dollars, not much, but was determined to start a business where he could be at home with his wife and family. Along with a partner, six dollars and a rented lot, Reuben and Siskin Iron and Metal, which would become Siskin Steel, was born. That same year, Robert's wife, Anna, gave birth to Mose. Three years later, Garrison was born. They had three children. Uh, My uh, aunt, who was named Sarah, my father, who's Mose, and my uncle, Garrison. Interestingly enough, there's another aside to this story. Uh, all three were born on the same day, three years apart, uh, January 29th. And in their home, actually, his wife, Anna, supported him in his efforts uh, in her uh, raising Garrison Mose and their sister Sarah uh, with lessons of responsibility. They had two cows in their basement and the boys traveled the neighborhood selling milk. They also sold newspapers on a corner. So the worth ethic was instilled in them at a very early age and also righteousness. Mose and Garrison eventually went into the business with their father. In 1926, Mr. Siskin passed away, leaving his sons to run the family business. It was in very good hands. The business continued to grow and expand under the guidance of Mose and Garrison. But in 1942, something would happen that would change the course of their lives from successful businessmen to something much, much more. My daddy, uh, Garrison, was on a train trip to travel up east on business. and never one to sit still. There was a stop in Virginia and he got off to get a newspaper and as he tried to get back on the train to um, re-enter the train, uh, the train jolted and a heavy metal cover that went over the stairs came down uh, with um, and injured him. Uh, He was taken to the hospital and they said it was such a bad injury Uh, that he might have to have his leg amputated uh, because of a blood clot that had formed in his leg. Garrison prayed all night to say, you know, so he would not lose, ask God not to lose his leg. And in the morning, the blood clot cleared and 
he did not lose his leg, and he uh, made a promise at that time um, to help. I was 11 years old, and it's as if it was yesterday. And Daddy had always, and Uncle Mose, been very charitable, but this was different. These deeply religious brothers did much more than simply continue building a successful business. They launched a renewed focus on giving. No matter what race or religion, to Mose and Garrison Siskin, everyone was the same a human being. When they built their buildings on Oak Street and Vine Street, they were for everybody. And this was in the 50s in Chattanooga, and it didn't make a difference. Color, race, religion. It, they had a chapel there. Anybody could use it. Sometimes they would get a call about, this person needs something. Maybe their house is burned down. Maybe something has happened. And they'd call them and ask them what they could do to help. And they would always help. I don't know of anybody they ever turned down. When Orange Grove was being built, um, the project manager over there called up the then head of Orange Grove and says, there's a steel truck here trying to deliver a steel from Siskin Steel and we, we haven't made an order, we don't have any money to pay for it. And uh, the head of Orange Grove said, get out of the way and let them unload it, because I'm sure it's a gift. So they provided free of charge all the steel for the, the first building of, of Orange Grove. They were two of the most generous people I've ever known. Uh, they were always helping us. They would give us money when we needed it. They'd give us money at Christ Christmas time to be given to the uh, uh, staff and to the students. And uh, they were just extremely generous people and very, very caring, very concerned. I don't know how many millions they would have given away, but uh, they did things in a quiet way that you often didn't hear about. When they started the 365 Club, I thought that was unique, the way they had a fundraising, because you know, they started out with a penny a day and then they had the wishing wells that they put in restaurants and different places and people would put their pennies in or whatever. And then uh, we started sending out letters and uh, asking for help. And every letter and every penny that came in, and we also had people who would go out and get do donations. And then every one would be answered by a personal letter. There is a tradition in Judaism that you give to charity, like many religions. Um, and there is a little box that we use for years and years, and as I recall, it was called a pushka box. And what you do is you take your spare change and you put it in there, and then you give that money uh, to charity. Uh, that sort of was the beginning. And of course, that later developed into a much bigger cigar box in their charity endeavors. A good portion of it they did anonymously. They didn't want the credit. They just, uh, I said some people, you know, deal in stocks and bonds and daddy and Uncle Mose, it was people and helping them. They were brothers and business partners. And like all siblings, they were different. But those differences would only serve to make their partnership even stronger. They were different personalities and they balanced one another because of that. They were supported, supportive of one another, whether it was in the workplace, in their commitments to the community, and in their family life. It was a true partnership. They did everything together. It was, they had their office in the same room, two desks, one right next to each other. You know, they called one of them Mr. Inside, that would have been Mr. Garrison, and the other one they called Mr. Outside. That was primarily because uh, Garrison ran the inside part of the business, and, and Bose ran the scrap side of the business and was outside most of the time. They had a little 
hard heads, Mr. Outside and Mr. Inside. So I'd see them uh, argue with each other about something, and in a minute they're just perfectly good friends. Says, well, you want to go out and eat tonight? <laughs> and stuff like that. You know, they would uh, work together all day. They'd come home, and they'd call each other. What's new? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So something, you know, really big <laughs> would be going on, but they every single day. There was a special joy to these brothers, a joy they found in helping others, a joy they found in family, and a joy they found with each other at work or at play. The Siskin Memorial Foundation, the Siskin Museum of Religious Artifacts, the Siskin Hospital for Physical Rehabilitation, the Siskin Children's Institute, all are testaments to Mose and Garrison Siskin and their dream to build places of hope, faith, and healing. the work that they have done. And I'm sure that, uh, I mean, they never dreamed that it would develop into what it has developed into. Because I remember Mr. Garrison telling me that he had to make sure that their work was carried on after they were gone. And he worked really, really hard for that. One of the things they did when they started the uh, foundation uh, was that the money that was in the foundation in order to assist those who couldn't afford uh, the, to pay for the services themselves. And to a great degree, that still exists today. The Siskin Children's Institute and the Siskin Hospital for Rehabilitation today stand as a tribute and a realization of a long-held dream that the brothers had. The people that are inside the building, the employees from everyone, from the volunteer grannies in every classroom to those that are in marketing development and um, fundraising, I mean, whatever you want to call it, everybody in that building wants to be there. They're there for a reason. They have a passion for children, not just special needs children, but for children. I had been trying and trying and trying stood up and got knocked down and I at that point didn't even want to try to stand up. It just it broke me. I was broken and every hospital I went to tried to glue me back together but I just kept falling back apart and Dr. Bowers not only glued me back together he just transformed me. He brought me back. They saved my daughter's life. They said that Emily was not going to die, but she inside was dying. Mose and Garrison had a passion for those children and those families that needed help with their child, whether it be financially, emotionally, or just socially. They put those people those children and those families together and they made it work and the outlook is brighter. And their, their dream has allowed other people to live their dreams. There is, no, there is no word except thank you. Thank you to Siskin, <laughs> the brothers. If they hadn't made this, I wouldn't be here. I would not be smiling and I'm smiling. <laughs> So thank you. The legacy of these two men, forged of steel, solidified with heart, lives on today and will continue as long as there are people in need and people who care. It was